So one of the biggest questions that I get asked with some of my guides as far as configuring, uh, deploying, installing Office 365 in non-persistent VDI environments is how to handle Microsoft Azure Active Directory single sign-on. Now, this is a problem that a lot of people have. They follow the guides, they set up all the software up properly. However, SSO does not work. And there's a couple of reasons for this. And so I finally decided to do a video and address this specific topic. I'm Stephen Wagner. You can visit my blog at stephenwagner.com. Now let's get to the topic. So Active Directory SSO, what is it? So Azure Active Directory provides SSO for single sign-on capabilities on domains where you have uh, configured integration with Azure Active Directory. Now, typically what happens is that if you have SSO configured, like on any computer, forgetting about VDI for a second, you can go to office.com and technically it should log you in with your um, Azure Active Directory credentials. Now, there's a couple different ways to set this up. And these are all design considerations that come into play when deploying VDI, um, especially non-persistent VDI, because there's a few things that you have to factor in and consider. Now, with Azure Active Directory, there's two different ways to accomplish this. The newer and modern way is with, as you can see on the screen here, SSO via primary refresh token. Now, this is the newer method that's built in for you know, Windows 10, Windows 11 machines, uh, and a couple Windows Server operating systems, where the actual workstations are what's called hybrid AD or hybrid Azure AD joined. And so essentially your Windows 10 or Windows 11 instance, not only is it joined to your on-prem Active Directory AD domain, but it's also hybrid joined and joined to your Azure Active Directory as well. Now that is how you enable Azure, uh, the uh, SSO via the primary refresh token, but there's a couple issues with this. So now if you have persistent VDI, it will just work right off the bat. There's no problems with it. The machines don't get uh, destroyed, recreated on log off, log on. So technically everything will just work. You know, you can configure your GPOs, deploy Microsoft 365, Office 365, and everything should work. Users should be able to automatically sign in with their SSO credentials. Now, when it comes to non-persistent VDI VMs, this is where it gets tricky because there are many considerations that you have to factor into this. Because if you are configured for SSO via the primary refresh token, what ends up happening is that every time one of your instant clone or non-persistent VDI virtual machines get created, it will domain join to Azure AD. Now this gets extremely messy because you're gonna have a whole bunch of null and orphaned uh, device entries in your Azure AD, and it's just not good. It, it just, it doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, I think a couple years ago, scripts were used to clean this up. I don't like it. So there's a couple alternatives to this. Now, uh, I'm going to include some links in the description of this video of some Microsoft articles that will go into this in detail. But when deploying the non-persistent, you can actually do a couple different things to, to avoid this from happening. If you don't require your VDI VMs to be hybrid joined to Azure AD, that's best. Because what you can do is that when you configure Microsoft uh, Azure AD Connect inside of your domain, you can actually exclude the OU, the organizational unit that contains your non-persistent VDI VMs. Now, another alternative for this, if you're in an environment where you're actually syncing your entire directory and you don't want to have any exclusions, is that there's actually a registry entry that you can create on your instant clone golden image that will actually stop the machine from performing a hybrid Azure AD join. Now, this is perfect because it'll never try to attempt, it'll never create all those entries, and you won't have to deal with duplicated orphaned entries and cleanup scripts and the whole deal. Um, it's just nice. Now, however, with all that being said, you've dealt with the issue of having numerous orphan devices in your Azure AD, but you still run into the problem of having to configure SSO so that you know when users log in, they can have it automatically connect to Office 365, activate using the SCA shared computer activation and all that fun stuff. Now, there's at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there was two methods. So now to get onto the other method, this is the older method called Azure AD Seamless SSO. Now, up to this point, essentially it is, I guess you could say used today for older operating systems such as Windows 8, Windows 7, and older machines that cannot do the hybrid 
Azure AD domain joins. Now, what's really nice about this technology is that in an environment where you don't want to have your Windows 10 or Windows 11 VDI VMs that are non-persistent joined to your Azure AD, you can actually implement seamless SSO, which will still function on Windows 10, Windows 11, provide Azure SSO, and it will make it so that everything works properly. And so that is something to consider because like I said, if you're not relying on any special services that Azure Active Directory is providing to your environment, then it's completely pointless to have these hybrid Azure AD domain join. So by implementing SSO, um, essentially what you can do is get to the point where, you know, the users can open up Office, it'll auto log in, it'll auto activate, SCA will function perfectly. And it's a great uh, way to actually deploy Microsoft 365 and Office 365 in non-persistent environments. So I just wanted to set the record straight, provide some information on that. There's going to be some links in the description. So I help, hope this helps you with your deployment because like I said before, this is one of the most main questions, uh, most major questions I get asked on a regular basis. Sometimes I'll get chats three, four, five times a day, people asking for help with this uh, just because they don't have SSO configured and they're looking for help and guidelines. It actually, last year, it took me some time to fully understand the differences because I thought seamless SSO was a older technology that didn't work with Windows 10 or Windows 11, where it actually does does, it just works differently than when you use the primary refresh token with the basic Azure SSO. Anyways, if this video helped, please make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel, and have a fantastic day.